Hey, what is going on, fellows and friends and family? How y'all doing out there? This is J. Kevin Johnson here, the Inspiration Station Company.com. Just wanted to take a few moments today and talk about the importance of uh, knowing your identity in, in Christ. Why it is essential that you know your identity in Christ. Hopefully, I'll make some sense today, and hopefully, uh, we can talk about some things that uh, talk about a subject uh, that I think I feel is very important when it comes to the called out, when it comes to Christians all over the world, that they really have a crystal clear clarity about uh, their identity and and what they are and who they are with reference to the the Most High with with their Creator. And how important it is to keep this in mind and how essential it is to have a crystal clear clarity about uh, your identity and what what it is that you are and who you are and, and uh, the place, the position that you hold as being a child of God, as you, as you hold as being an imager of the Most High, what that really means. And how in knowing that, that can empower you uh, to live a life of uh, peace and prosperity and abundance. And uh, a life that no matter what is going on around you in this world, no matter what is taking place uh, in, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in your community and in your nation and in the, the outer uh, environment around you, that First and foremost, you can live uh, peacefully within and then you can uh, be a catalyst or you could be a steward or manager of uh, the environment and the people, the souls that uh, come under your influence and that fall under the sphere of your stewardship, your management. Uh, So that's very powerful when you realize that just knowing your identity, what kind of got it kind of got me going on this uh, trail this rabbit trail today is that a friend had sent me an article uh, by uh, a media guy who by the name of Tom Burrell and he was just uh, he wrote he wrote an article let me see if I can find it real quick I think I erased it I wish I didn't but uh, I'm coming to you live, by the way. This uh, Today is live, so this may be a little different in that uh, I was um, uh, doing recordings, but today I decided to do something different and come to you all live today. Uh, so let me see if I can find this article real quick. But in, anyway, as I look for it, uh, the article is just speaking to specifically uh the black community, African-American community, and that how through 400 years of slavery and uh, psychological, emotional, and physical slavery, warfare, conditioning, propaganda, brainwashing, uh, that that uh, the identity of the black community is, is very much unintact, lost, and skewed. It's messed up. <laughs> and uh when you and when you take a people and you scrub their identity and, and reduce uh them down to um uh reduce them down to human chattel or property then you can eat they that group of people can easily be managed can easily be enslaved can easily be made to do uh your bidding or your will uh, so, just looking at the larger things of things and relating to back, uh, circling back to us as being Christians in general, uh, regardless of race, creed, or color, it's important that you know your identity because if you don't, you can easily fall prey to the enemy and the propaganda, the, the messages, the things that he puts out on a regular basis and that you know, it can have you really struggling and striving in ways and in areas that you uh, never thought possible uh, or ways that is just uh, 
not that won't allow you to live your best life now that won't allow you to live in 100 percent total uh shalom or peace in every area of your life as your heavenly father would like you to your, your fa- heavenly father uh, not only wants you to be heaven bound, but he wants you to be earthly good and wants you to live uh, your best life in this earth. Uh, live. He wants you to live in peace uh, in every which possible way that is possible uh, today in this present where you wherever you may find yourself under the sound of my voice. He wants you to live that now while uh, hoping and looking forward to what's to come. So this is why it's crucial and knowing your identity in Christ, it is very crucial. The enemy, the devil, Satan has uh, a stake in you not knowing, in me not knowing my true identity and what it is that I am and why it's important when it comes to comes to your life. Uh, so, let me see, I can't find it and I'm not going to worry about it, but anyway... Uh, you know, one of the things is if you don't, again, if you don't know your identity, then you can fall victim to a lot of the the stratagems. You can fall victim to a lot of uh, the, the things that the tricks, the fiery darts of the adversary that he has his corporation of evil, that he has his corporation of minions uh, operating and putting out on a frequent basis. You know, we live. In today's uh, world, we live in a highly architect, highly designed world that uh, nothing about our, our world is just, just by, not much about our world is just by happenstance. Much of it exists because somebody willed it, somebody had an agenda, just like anything in your life. Much of it is there because uh, you willed it, you went and you executed and you, you went and got it. Um or it, or in, a, in most cases, it was handed to you, uh, you know. So there's nothing in our world that that just just by happenstance, and the the enemy has a stake in making sure that um, our culture, uh, making sure that our environment, making sure that everything about this world has his touch, has his influence, and those who follow him has their influence. Uh, so that, uh, you know, humans don't realize their true identity as being uh, the creation of the Almighty and taking their rightful place as being uh, imagers of God operating and moving with power uh, and, and moving with power and moving with force and uh, doing the things that we were designed to do in this earth as far as being stewards of the earth, enjoying uh, the present in the earth that was given to us and moving on and uh, growing and learning and uh, pursuing being prosperous, pursuing good success while uh, working through many of the challenges that uh, life in and of itself presents uh, to us. So we have you have purpose, you have reason. And uh, you have an identity in Christ. So let me go to Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Genesis 1, 26, 28. Genesis 1, 26, 28. Let me go there real quick. Let me see if I can get it. Pull it up. Genesis 1, 26, 28. Let me see. And there was a... Fa- Hold up. No, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So I just wanted to read that just to know that if you don't know anything else, know that you are made in the image 
of the Most High. Of you are made in the image of God, meaning that you are pretty much a a, rep, a representation. Uh, if you look up the Hebrew word of um, image, it uh, it means idol. So you're almost like a a you're a representation, an idol of the Most High that is meant to be a vessel that is to be indwelt by His Spirit, uh, so that uh, that connects with your spirit, so that uh, you can be instructed, led, and guided uh, by His nudgings, by His taught, by His uh, his hand, his operation, uh, in your life. So that's, hopefully that's, uh, you know, when you sit and meditate, contemplate and think about that, that's, uh, something that's very powerful to dwell on and that you, your body, your physical body is sacred space. You are an image meant to be indwelled, uh, by the, uh, presence of God. Your body is quote unquote, a tent meant for the most high to dwell in uh, so that's your identity and when you when you think about that that is very uh, powerful knowing that there is more to this this reality that meets the eye and that you are meant for more than just uh, this what we see now um, let me go to second Corinthians 5 and 4. 2 Corinthians 5 and 4, real quick. Let me go there. For we that are in the, this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not for that, we would be unclothable in cloth upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Um, let's see. Hold up. I don't think that's what I was looking for. Oh, well, let me go back up real quick. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. Uh, well, I, I didn't want to go here, but uh, we'll just let me comment on it real quick. Just knowing that, um, you know, in the in futuristic terms, uh, we are meant for more than just here, as I was saying. That's and that uh, your identity is that you are meant to not only just live in this life now in peace, love, happiness, and prosperity, but you are meant for a future dwelling in which uh, you are even to to live with uh, the Creator. Uh, alongside the creator as he indwells you. So just knowing that uh, our earthly bodies are tents, they, they, they are sacred space meant to be indwelt. So you just can't treat your body any kind of way. And you have to know your identity because if you don't know your identity, then you are subject to uh, treat your body, treat your mind, treat your heart uh, any type of way, not really uh, holding it to high esteem. It's, this is very important because if you don't hold yourself to high esteem, knowing that you are a child of God, knowing that you are an idol of God, knowing that you are made in the image of God, then you fall subject to the ways of the world and uh, humanism and secularism, uh, believing all kinds of philosophies ranging from you come from a rock uh, in the primordial age on up through the, the ape. Or ranked in another uh, popular philosophy or thought out there now is that you were seated here by aliens <laughs> or small god, you know, small little g gods. So you you can fall subject to a lot of philosophies and a lot of uh, vain uh, viewpoints out there if you don't realize and take your rightful place and accept your rightful place and believe uh, and and feel that. Uh, you are a creator of the, you are a creation of the most high meant to be a, meant to be, um, a steward over those that over your life and over meant to be a steward of the, and cultivate the seed, uh, that's been planted in, in each and every one of you to allow to come to fruition through your relationship with God doing your part, uh, as your gifts, 
and as your talents and as your innate abilities uh, are designed for you to fulfill uh, in this life. So every one of you out there under the sound of my voice has a destiny, has a calling on their life in which a seed of kingdom uh, advancement, a seed for kingdom advancement has been placed inside of you. And in that uh, in that relationship, the activation of that seed uh, is uh, brought to fruition, and it's up to you in your relation in your relationship with your heavenly Father to cultivate and bring that seed of kingdom advancement to fruition uh, in your life as it as it's been planted in you to do. I don't know what that is for you. I don't know what your specific uh, realm of calling or your specific set of uh, skill set of uh, abilities and and things have uh, been purposed in you to do it's, that's up to you to realize and that's up to you for you to uh, find out in your journey in life but just knowing that you do have uh, a purpose a design uh, intention for your life you're just not an accident no matter how you got here uh, just knowing that and uh, resting in your identity as being a child of God, regardless of what the, uh, the larger society at hand may tell you. Um, just knowing that it should be hopefully resting and contemplate on that uh, is enough to hopefully have you realize that uh, uh, your life has meaning. And that when you know this, you can you can live your best life now. And that you don't have to accept the indoctrination and the brainwashing that we've all been born into, uh, regardless of where we may find ourselves. Uh, you don't have to accept your current state of affairs if you're not happy with it. You have the ability to change. And you have the responsibility and obligation to make sure that you find out and that you realize what it is, who, what it is you're to do and who it is that you are in Christ. taking a sip of my coffee here so just knowing that you know you you uh can live the good life let me see here let me see let's go to romans uh second corinthians hold up let me go to romans 8 9 through 11 romans 8 9 through 11 just wanted to, just wanted to inspire and encourage and motivate you today to take your relationship with Christ very seriously as you live the good life and have fun and enjoy. And as you go about your business, taking care of business, you know, paying your bills, making sure you meet your obligations, um, making sure that things get done that need to be done, just to keep it in your thoughts today that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, that you you are a child of God and you're meant for more than what meets the eye than what you may think. You're meant for more than just going to work and paying bills. Let's put it that way. You're meant for more than that. Um, so just don't accept that. Uh, Romans eight nine. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If ye if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And uh, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. So just know, uh, just know that your body is meant to be indwelled by the spirit of God. And when you come into a relationship with him, you accept salvation. Uh, your spirit, the breath that is, has been blown in you, uh, connect, reconnects and is uh, connected back to the main source, the big ass spirit, and he comes in and he dwells and he takes residence in you, in your heart, and uh, that's how that's how you have a relationship uh, with him. Just reading off some verses, hopefully to help encourage you uh, along your journey today and help you get get you moving along the way. Didn't want to spend too long. I think I went over my time. I'd usually try to stay on no longer than fifteen minutes. So I think I might have went over a little bit, but uh, just wanted to come on and encourage, inspire, inform, educate, 
However, this is this uh, live stream is hitting you today or recording, whenever you may find this, to just encourage you today and know that uh, you are meant for more than what meets the eye. You have purpose. You have intention. You have in, you have design. You're you're not here by happenstance, and that your identity in Christ. When you realize that. Uh, you have purpose and that you are created in the image of God to be indwelt by him, then that's very powerful. And hopefully that empowers you, that motivates you to live uh, your best life now and to pursue it with all your heart, soul, and mind. So this is Jamin Johnson, the Inspiration Station Company dot com. You can find me on a whole host of uh, social media platforms out there. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, you could find me on Tumblr, YouTube, SoundCloud. You can find me all over the place, Twitter. Uh, but my main my main places of operation is Messenger and Facebook and Instagram at the moment. I do touch on the other ones uh, reg- regularly too. So just hit me up, leave a comment, hit share, like, do whatever it is that you think uh, needs to be done. Um, so I appreciate you. And I am I am out. May his face shine on you and give you peace.